recording. How can we hear? Can we hear? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. I got you. I got you. Well, here we are. Yep. What episode is this? Four? Four. Quattro. That was one and two. On one and two. One and two. And you had one with uh, Eddie and Ronald, right? Eddie and Ronald. So yeah, we're four. This is number four. And I guess what we're going to talk about is our competition. January. Wasn't a fail. Wasn't a fail January 10th? No. 16th? Something like that. Yeah, 16th or something. Saturday. Saturday. Whatever that was, Saturday. With the new moon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the moon matters. Yeah. But we didn't win. No. That's to be expected. I mean, winning, winning is uh, not going to happen every time. No, no way, man. No, it's not. Can't. No. The law of averages is not going to allow you to win every time. You win it once, then now you have hope for the future. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. But we did kill. Mm -hmm. Five coyotes. Had probably uh, that many more come in. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I've done a lot of hunts since then, so. Yeah. Uh, we, we were... Yeah, we've had yeah we had we definitely had our fair share of unlucky and sucky. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it happens. I mean, people sometimes bullets don't go where they're supposed to, where they're intended. And you know, we can we can blame a little bit on the wind. It was a windy. Yeah, it was it was windy. I, it was cold. A cold front was coming in, but I was amazed at, at how well things moved. Yeah, you've, you never, know, you've never really seen something like that during the day, huh? No, nah, man, not during the day. I mean, yeah, I've got what I have one daytime kill moving into that because I'm always hunting at night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that daytime stuff is pretty cool. I, I think I, I may have to lean towards the daytime. You know, if you're not hunting a contest, I mean, daytime would be good because you don't get near sleepy. Yeah. Yeah, you know? nighttime does suck because you always want to go till, especially like, not the time change because yeah. then you're you don't even get dark till seven eight nine so yeah you have to hunt till midnight just to get into it right yeah well you know it was fun i had a good time and i stayed awake till about four and took my nap four to six y'all still killed something i woke up and killed something and but when the sun came back up and we hunted again that was we didn't see anything did we mm -mm. nothing and we hunted till one mm -hmm. One o'clock. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. Because we had to be there at one thirty, so we hunted till one. Yeah, one. We had five coyotes, but we didn't have a fox. No, we didn't have. We didn't have. Well, it's the coyotes don't really matter for the fox. It's the cat that matters for the yeah. five coyotes. We didn't have a cat. Yeah. I, mean, I well, I, we can tell the story when, but we yeah. should have had a cat. That was my yeah. fault. Well, now we started when we started off north of Baird, in our very first stand, we had a coyote come in and. Man, I mean, just made my whole hunt. I shot the thing in the damn face. No jaw. Yeah. Lower jaw was gone. I'll try to get the picture posted up. Blow the jaw, gone. I mean, there was a, the front of it was there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that goes into your, the bullet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what everybody's like, what's the best bullet? Oh, man, it's impossible to answer that. Because I have been shooting this twenty two Creed now long enough that I can tell you, this this one particular bullet I'm using right now is a Blitz King. Mm -hmm. The other night I shot a fox, Sunday night, I shot a fox at 40 yards and it, oh shit, it's still in the back of the forward if you wanna look at it. Mm -hmm. It emptied its guts out. I mean, I shot it in the chest, it was kinda of quartered and it emptied its guts out. The one that I shot in the face didn't kill it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the cow, yeah. Yeah, the cow, yeah, no, it, did, still it didn't kill it. Yeah. And then later that night, I shot one, and Stephen said it was 274 distance. Mm -hmm. Long ways, long ways. The bullet went in, went out. And then I shot one at 120 after my night or so. Bullet went in, no exit. Yeah. So what happens is, is the closer you are, the faster they're going, the faster they're spinning, the more they're going to fragment and they can't dump the energy, and so they keep on traveling, and they exit, and they take a whole bunch of shit with them. Mm -hmm. So then when you get to 100 yards, your velocity is a little slower, the bullet's not spinning near as fast, it goes in, it dumps its energy, and it stops. 
Yeah. You get out to 250 yards, now it's really slowed down, it's damn sure not spinning as fast, and it doesn't fragment, and it kind of and it kind of acts like a full metal jacket. Just goes, straight through. Just goes right on through. Remember, you got the one y'all carried back. Yeah. So, when somebody says, what's the best bullet? I don't think there is, anything's better than a full metal jacket. So, I mean, yeah. any VMAX, uh, we've used the VMAX, we've used. That's all I use. VMAX. Yeah, that's all I use, and, and you're running 3,500. And you don't destroy stuff. No. If you speed that bullet up, then you're gonna destroy stuff. Well, I mean, last night when we went, we killed those foxes, I killed one at like 50 yards, and it he had nothing left in him. His whole yeah. guts were gone. Well, see, there you go. You know, you're closer. The velocity is yeah. more. The bullet's spinning faster. Well, the way you know, my knowledge, the Vmax is made to enter and explode, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. So yeah, so one of, the one that I shot in the face, it, it chipped her front tooth. Mm -hmm. And then there was a channel in the roof of her mouth and then it dumped all its energy in the back of her throat. And, it, and that's really as far as it went. It was about 80 yards. So that really aggravates, well, it was badass because I shot her in the face. I mean, I love doing that, you know, we talked about it. But it aggravated me because I wasn't using a VMAX that had a little thicker jacket and I could have took the top of her head clean off. Yeah, probably. that would have been pretty sweet. But I'm using the Blitz King, and it's a thinner jacket bullet, and it just it just dumps fast. Yeah. It's spinning so fast that it, it just hits and it just fragments, and all of its energy is gone. But you seem to like the Blitz King a lot I more. I like the Blitz King, yeah. So, well, I don't know. If you, I I haven't, we haven't really talked about if you like it more in Vmax or not, but it seems like it's for right. competition. I guess I, I I have to like the Blitz King. But if we're out of competition, I want Vmax because I want to. If I shoot one in the face again, I want it to take its head clean off. Yeah, and you can't you, you can't lose that weight for a competition. I mean, we've seen them come in and people win by ounces mm -hmm. over somebody else, and that could have been because it lost more blood. You know, the guy that got second, that he, you know, if he'd have kept his kept his fluids, yep. you know, he he may could have inched out the other guy by an ounce or something. But depends on how close it is, but. You know, that, that day, you know, man, we called in a lot of stuff, and it was in the daytime, and the, the cold front was coming in, because remember, at 2 o'clock, we were like, oh, there it is. There's yeah, that wind cold. change. It got yeah. cold. And uh, and people, you know, anybody that don't know, it, 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 it got cold, because before 5 o'clock, our water bottles were in the back froze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and during the day. Yeah. During the day. They were, the water bottles, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, then froze in the back of the four-wheeler. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell? So... Uh, yeah, so then we, we just hunted around that one mountain. I mean, y'all had it planned out. The way y'all had it planned out, you scouted it. You said 30 minutes. You know, by the time you get there, you set up, you make the 15 minutes, and then you shut down, and then you move to the next one. You gave 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So the way y'all had it planned out, I mean, it, it was perfect. Scouted out. It ended up working out. The time, time range was perfect because our last stand was right at dark. Yeah. So... And we were a, a touch bit ahead of schedule because bit, we, made it we one did more make extra. that one more extra stand. That's when we called in that triple. Yeah, that was that really, I think, started the bad luck, in my opinion. Well, no, I guess that no. wasn't really what the start of the bad luck was. No, because you missed that one coyote. And we missed a coyote and bobtail on the same stand. Yeah. Yeah, that was, it's just, I don't know. That's why I was, I was telling the whole Stephen the other day. I think we're just very inefficient with our calling i guess is like we call them in but we don't we don't get them killed at an efficient enough rate you know because i don't think we're ever going to win a qu quantity contest no, like i've always no. said so when we do get them in we got to get them killed you know yeah well you know we had that conversation about watching them and seeing what they're doing if they're pacing and they're looking and they're back and forth maybe they're, they're and they're not budging yeah I'll take that shot yeah but if they're inching towards you yeah, let them let them let them move in another hundred. I mean that that makes a difference in oh a two hundred yard shot compared to a hundred yard shot is well, night and day, oh, especially at night. Deer night. Yeah, at night, yeah. So, I mean, one hundred fifty or two hundred at during the day is a little easier than nighttime. Yeah, most definitely. So just being a little bit pacing, a little bit more pacing. I know Stephen shot. I I, I mean I was sitting right beside him on the rack, and when he pulled the trigger, I didn't even know what he was shooting at. I didn't see any eyes. 
So you know dang good and well that he was shooting through the, the trees and the briars and yeah, all I can see was his eyes. Yeah, I mean, so okay, yeah, that that the shot's not there. Hold on a minute. Yeah, but sometimes they well, never they never appear out the other side of that bush no. and they're gone. So you know, I, maybe that's why we need to need to start carrying a thirty thirty little brush gun, shoot through them damn trees. Yeah, I mean, I just I think what what happened to us really. Was I think it just nervous and cold, very yeah, cold, very cold. It was just a little nerve going on. Yeah, you know what I mean, trying to hurry and get it done. It was so like an eater. Well, yeah, that. But I, I mean, you know, we won big coyote last year, so we're like kind of, ex- we have ex- expectations for yeah. ourselves, I guess. Yeah. And we were trying to. I think we just overdid it, which was was going to happen. In my opinion, I, I mean, like the coyote I missed. Whenever I, I I know I rushed the shot, but I mean it felt like it was it was on. But I mean, damn, the wind was blowing twenty five miles an hour off our left. So yeah, who knows? And that was you were for me. I arranged it because yeah. I I didn't know you were I didn't know you were shooting at it. I did, yeah. So I arranged it at two fifty seven. I'm like okay, and I set it down, got on the gun, click safety off, got on the scope, boom, you shot. And the way he took off, I was like, okay, yeah, that was what he was shooting at. I don't know if you're shooting at another one, but the way he took off, yeah, you were shooting at that one. Yeah, I was. I mean, and that that just comes down to like not being able to communicate, like, because we had you like 20 yards off to the right, yeah. so you could kind of watch because we couldn't see over there where you could see. Yeah, and then we could watch everything over here to the left around the bush, and that's just a lot of not communicating, no communication. Like, yeah, I mean, because whenever he shot at that bobcat. I didn't even know what I mean. I was looking around like, yeah, what's going on? I mean, I, I thought I thought something had come out of that draw. I'm like, wow, boy, boom, they got a quick one. I didn't even look up on the side of the hill. That, I mean, I, I didn't even have any idea that what what yeah. y'all were shooting at. Yeah. And then you know, I mean, that was so quick. Normally, yeah, just keep just keep calling. You know. And then we called it a coyote, and I missed it. But I don't know. I just I think it was a, a combination. That's the combination of the hunt. Which I guess we can get into here in a minute when we get to the end of the hunt, but yeah, it was just the combination of the, the whole thing. Just I, I got in my head a little bit. His aunt. Yeah, that. But I I got a little down. All right. And we're back. Can you hear me now? Yep. A little technology malfunction here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. So uh, four bastards have four ways, I guess. Yeah, we, we had the side uh, phone. We just talked like thirty minutes for nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here we go. We're on dang it. We left off. Um, we just talked about missing, missing the bobcat and the cow in the same stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess I think we got through that. I think the last thing we talked about before it turned off. So I guess we go from there, which is our final stand of the day. Yes. And. And we, uh, we had we'd called in that triple. Yes. Yeah, the triple, we were in an elevated position, and we called in that triple. And I think what we want to talk about on this one was how far they came. Yeah, they were, they were coming from a long ways, like an mile. insane. Yeah. Yes, mile. Had to have been. Yeah. Because by the time you spotted them, they were 800. Yeah. Probably. And where they had came from was probably another 400. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just an insane distance that... That I, I mean, I, it's hard to believe, you know, that like you see these guys on TV, like uh, O'Neill Ops guys. I mean, they hunt in and and G Ops. They hunt in a in a prairie kind of setting where you don't see a tree anywhere, and then all of a sudden, I mean, these dogs are coming from an insane distance. But they're they're blasting the sound, and they came from literally upwind, and they still yeah. heard it upwind. Yeah. But it, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, so, it, it, that was eye opening. A triple. I mean, wow, it's like get her done, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think we, I think we were kind of what we talked about for thirty minutes was about nothing. But I think what we had talked about there was the sounds that we use. Like I don't change my sound sequence ever. Yeah. Like I go lucky cottontail, lucky lucky cottontail, lucky pecker, or I flip them. Yeah. And then I go another cottontail that I find maybe in the Rick Rick's folder or whatever that he put on there. And then I go like a coyote fight or, or a coon fight or coon distress, whatever yeah. we're trying to call, you know, at the end, I yeah. try to try to do, or maybe a fox distress or something like that. That's usually, that's usually what I do every time. Actually, the distresses I do at the beginning every time. Yeah. I'm not a howl person. 
Yeah, I'm not a. I just well, think that scares away. It, it could. It could. It whatever. If they got one of them chickens, yeah. chicken ass coyotes out there, he's gonna hear all that and he's gonna be like, no, well, I ain't. Uh uh. I ain't messing with that guy. Well, I you think, know? and I've also I've watched a bunch of people talk about. It. I think like we I was saying earlier too, like coyotes are in a territory. They own a territory. So like if you howl in their territory, territory, they're either probably not gonna come check that out yeah. or. They're just like whatever, yeah, kind of type of thing, or they're leaving that territory because they think someone's coming into it. I don't know. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, may depend on the dis disposition of the cow. Is, yeah. is he is he an alpha or is he a runt? Yes, you know that he ain't gonna come on and, and challenge nothing. But yeah, I mean, how many? It, it's just I think there's more what they would call pussy cows than there are yeah. alphas. Yeah, I, I just think you appeal to their to their their stomach, their senses, they, they hear that noise and they're curious in any way and they want to just come, yeah, kind of come check it out. And I, I think maybe a how, and if it ain't breeding season, I mean, I don't think they're going to consider it. They're just going to think, well, there's another cow over there, so what, you know? Yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know yeah. enough about howling, but I I think their breeding season, the fights are enough. Yeah. Because, I mean, if the cows are fighting, they were, you know, typically what are they fighting over? They're fighting over a, a female coyote. Yeah. So that cow is going to come and see what the hell is going on. They're curious about that too. Yeah. You know, or they're alpha and they want to come whoop somebody's ass. You know. Yeah. So that's that was that's kind of my opinion on calling. I'm I'm more of a, a do it do it the same way every time. If, if it works, keep doing it. If yeah. it don't work for a while, like we talked about, like maybe change it up a little bit. But I'm I'm more of a distressed caller. I'm not a I'm not a. Um, Aggressive yeah. fight, howl type of color. Like I'll get, I'll do, a, I'll do a fight at the end. You know? Well, when we're doing contests, we're hunting three Everything. different animals. Yes. So you don't want to start off with a howl. I mean, a fox and a bobcat don't give a damn about all that. No, and a fox usually don't. Which, don't get me wrong, it's happened before. But foxes usually don't come anything cow related. I mean, right. we've killed a fox on a on a coyote fight. We did. Me and Stephen actually did it last night. We called in a, we called in one fox with Lucky Cottontail, got him shot. I instantly turned into a coyote fight, because we're still trying to kill coyotes. Instantly turned into a coyote fight, and within a minute, another fox comes out. We kill it. We kill the double with a coyote fight and a rabbit distress. So yeah. it's possible, but it's not very yeah. ideal, I think. I think I, I've had some pretty good luck here lately. When I turned on the fox distress, yeah, yeah, that, that always works. Coyotes will come see that. Oh, do they? Yes. I don't, I've never killed a coyote yeah. with a fox distress before. Yeah, they come in, they want to see what's going on there. That's cool. And that's what I, that, the other night, whenever me and Marcus hunted, we we had a fox. This was Saturday night. Saturday, had a fox. And then we had a coyote come in behind us. I mean, he was a long ways away. And then he finally, you know, he, 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 he busted us and he was gone. So then I knew there was a fox over there. So I turned on a fox distress and then a coyote came in and shot the Shot the coyote, but all the fox would ever do is bark at him. Yeah, you know he was still he was still up in there somewhere. See, and I, I've come to figure out foxes maybe a little bit. Like last night, our first day of the night, we start playing a rabbit distress, and we and we're looking at where those big weeds go. We're looking around, and I see these eyes coming. And we're inside a high fence because this guy had paid us to come kill some predators off his high fence. So we're trying to kill anything. And I think this thing crossed through the fence mm -hmm. and came in and I saw him from a long ways, but he would never, the fox would never come all the way. Call. He got to about 200, 250 and kept just kind of like coming back, coming, going back and forth. And so we finished that stand. We shot at a raccoon and we went around closer where he kind of ultimately left and turned on fox distress. And that thing came flying in. Yeah. So about 40, 50 yards got him killed. But I just, I feel like foxes are kind of like, dumb but i feel like you got to be close to them also yeah or maybe it's just a combination of like maybe he didn't like what he saw in that field yeah you know i don't it's kind of a, I mean, like, like we were talking about i don't think anybody really knows yeah what makes an animal come in yeah but i don't know but after that triple and the asshole in the s10 pickup run them off yeah then then you know that's whenever we switched the gears and went to night it was cold and we got over there and we started what did it take? About 30 minutes to get all of our damn clothes on? Yeah, it took us a while. And uh, that first stand is when you missed the bobcat, right? Yes, that was like that a, was the continued downturn of your 
nice. enthusiasm. Yeah, I definitely. After that bobcat, I definitely was pissed off. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that was not fun. Um, y'all said that y'all y'all actually saw it first. Yeah. And then I was on the ground, and I I could see under the tree that he was under. Yeah. Y'all couldn't really see under that tree. <laughs> I was elevated, and I was getting ready, and I was trying to look, and I was, I wasn't seeing it because I guess he was under a bush or a tree, or, and and all of a sudden you shot. And, I didn't hear the thump. Yeah, there was no thump. There was a crash. Yeah, it was definitely a miss. But at that point, I still thought it was maybe me. I thought I missed. You know, I mean, yeah. we talked about the cat that I missed before. Um, I, at this point, I was a little, I was a little pissed. But I mean, we kept trucking. We went to the next stand. You saw a fox. Yeah. No. Uh, he just didn't give us. He came in. He got down in our scent cone, and he was gone. Yeah. You know, it. You got to be ready. Foxes, man, they're, they're moving. Yeah, you they're know. always moving. Um, and I was gonna, I was gonna iterate on this earlier, but, um, so I know bobcats really don't give shit about scent or like yeah. wind from what I've gathered. Coyotes do, but do fox, you think foxes do? Yes. You think so? Yes. Yes. Cause last year when we hunted over there in Wingate, the wind was all wrong and I mentioned it. We went ahead and done it and the fox was coming in and when he, he hit our, he come out into the wheat field and he, he come across, come across and we were, you know, trying to stop him. Straight down. Man. And then he got in that scent cone and I mean, that sucker picked up a gear and he was gone and he never looked back. So, yes. there's a little bit to that, I yeah. think. I just, I, I, I think, you know, like I said, I think bobcats don't really care too much about the scent. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I was kind of, kind of calling them bobcats and killing them and, Never really got that feeling that they do. But yeah. cows definitely do. Oh yeah, most of them. I guess foxes do. But yeah, I guess he had got your scent on that. Yeah, that on Teresa's place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, because he was he was downwind. Yeah, I mean pretty much. He moved into it and he was just poof disappeared. Like I said, I can't. I have a hard time seeing that fur and grass with a light at night. It, it's hard for me. I I pick up the eyes real well, but I can't. Yeah. You know, with the stigmatism, I guess I, I don't know. I mean, I had I had trouble. I had to see movement. Yeah. You know what I mean? They could stand, be standing there, just looking at me, and I, if I don't see their eyes, I may not see them. Yeah. If they move, then I can I can see the movement. But we were hunting one time with with Eddie, and then we we had a cow come in, and I had the shotgun, and they were like shoot him, shoot him. I don't see him. You yeah. know, I, I couldn't see it. Yeah. And I'm not just gonna aimlessly shoot. You know. Because he wasn't, we couldn't see his eyes. He was going. I mean, he was 30 yards and he was moving. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, the nighttime, I mean, you know, I enjoy the nighttime. I enjoy the daytime now. But we uh, we went from there. Where did we go from Teresa's? The pipe yard. The pipe yard. And never get it yet. Never got him across the road. Yeah. In case she's across the road. Yeah. So never got a shot on him. And that's the one we think is close to being a winner. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously we're going to try to kill him. So, yeah. But we can't shoot across the road. So. Can't shoot across the road. And that, after that, we, we, we stayed on that stand for a while trying to get him to come in. And after that, uh, we went blank, 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 blank. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't see nothing. And I think that was about the, the midnight mark is when we kind of, we kind of gathered some information mm -hmm. on a little inside of maybe midnight to 11.30 midnight to like 3 o'clock, 2.30, 3 o'clock is not very good. Yeah. We never really had good luck at that time. I mean, we've well, definitely killed stuff in that time, but I think it's just not as movement. Well, when we got over to Ranger, the very first the very first stand is where Stephen shot through the briars. Yes. And uh, so that was the very first stand. We saw one there, and then it was a couple more stand, and then we got over to across from that gas plant. And that's when I missed the one that was way out there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we called them back in. Same called spot. them back in, and, and, and I got one way out there again. Where did you miss the house cat? Or what? That was on Floor Ranger. Oh, that okay. was in between Albany. Yeah, so that was whenever you had the meltdown and air yes. mailed your bog pod. Your bog pod, yeah. Yeah. So I had missed the bobcat the very first night, the very first stand of the night time, and then went through and didn't ever have a shot. To shoot at because yeah. we, we saw the fox never got him to come across the road and then we had a bunch, bunch of blanks so then we go to moran and i shoot at a black figure that 
we knew there was foxes there and we knew there was a big fox there. So when I saw all the eyes come in and it was kind of behind the grass, I shot, missed again, 60 yards. And then I proceeded to do some illegal activities and walked yeah. down the road and was pissed off trying to see if my gun was off or if it was me. And I shot a sign, missed the sign from 120 yards. So at that point, meltdown. Meltdown. Throw the bar pod. What the fuck? Yeah. This is bullshit. Yeah. Pissed off. Fucking bit burnout. out. Yeah. All, all over. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I mean, and, and you, you, you air mailed the bottle pod and, and it survived. Oh, yeah. It's sitting right there. Yeah. But I mean, it's right there. We've had some problems since yeah. then. But everybody, man, hates on the damn bottle pod. It, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. Go 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 spend 800 bucks. Yeah. Go 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 spend 800 bucks. And, well, I guess the problem that I've run into, and it's really not a huge problem, it's just a kind of a preference problem. Is I'm not a big fan of the clamp anymore because yeah. I feel like where that's where I'm having my problems is yeah. is uh my stock is really flimsy, cheap stock. It's yeah. a Christensen Arms gun. I mean it's a nice gun. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like when I tie now that I have the suppressor on there, it's very top heavy. So now that I scoot it back and I clamp it down on the more of the barrel. The barrel into the stock. The yeah. Barrel into the stock. Yes. Um, I feel like now it's torquing the barrel some sort of way and because i've missed a lot here recently and i and i know i'm not missing yeah. like i know that i'm on whatever i'm shooting i know it yeah so and um i mean I, every time i side it in i don't side it in with the bog plug which maybe that's what i need to be doing honestly you know well I'm that'd like, be a good way to test that theory yeah. is clamp it down in the bog pod and then put the torque in it like you're trying to move on to talk onto an animal yeah because we grabbed your stock, I mean, you can just it's grab it like flimsy. that, and it's just very flimsy out on yeah. the end of it. You know, I've heard, like I said, I've heard, I've heard people, you know, you need to practice the way you play. So, I've never, we've never shot in our guns with the bog pod, so, uh -huh. or even, you know, practiced with the bog pod. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's what I need to do, and just see what the hell. But, I mean, I hate to be the guy that oh, it's all equipment, but yeah, it, it may be a little me, but I, I think the equipment is a little something's going on. It's not right. Cause, right. Cause then last night is when I finally figured out that I'd been clamping it to the stock, the barrel into the stock. Yeah. So I moved it back toward the bolt side, where it's more sturdy, and I hit right where I was aiming. Yeah. Every time, you know, shot, I shot it right here in the face from 100 something yards. That's where I aimed, and I had a lot more success. Yeah. So maybe that's what it was. But back to our hunt, anyway. Yeah. I don't want to get too far down. <laughs> that. Uh, right. Yeah, that's a whole nother podcast. Yeah, that is a whole nother podcast, but. Um, we that's I had a meltdown, didn't burn out, fucking pissed off at everybody, uh, and then we called in a fox. <clears throat> should have let you shoot. I mean, I think Steve and Liam admit we should have let you shoot. You were on it with your gun, and he shot with a shotgun and missed. Yeah, that was a decent sized fox. Who knows for the one? I mean, I was on it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I clicked safety off, and I started. Well, I was on everything. Yeah, I started getting on the trigger, and boom, he shoots, and it. I mean, I just saw dirt fly up, and that thing was gone. Yeah, I mean, that's then that, that's. That's another iteration of I think how our night was going. Yeah, and it just kept at that point it just kept getting worse. We'd have a few like good, and then it just bad and good yeah. and bad. But so then we went to Ranger, and that's when Steven shot to the very first stand of there. That's when Steven shot to the brush pile, mm -hmm. which can't really blame him too much for that one because who knows if it came in. We tried we tried to get him in. In my opinion, I thought he was straight downwind. I didn't think he was coming in. Yeah, because he came in from the wind was blowing out of our north. He came from the north. He came from, yeah, like the north, north, west. It came all the way around and was like south to southeast. Yeah. So in my opinion, I thought he was downwind. Yeah. He all said he wasn't quite downwind yet. Um, I didn't think he was coming. He was damn sure getting close. If he, he was wasn't in that cone, he was, he was 10 steps close. from it. Um, I guess we can't really blame yeah, him too much for sure. that one, but I mean, took a shot, risked it, yeah. then hit it, whatever. And then that's when we got to. You kill, you miss one and killed it on the same yeah, stand. Yeah, I was able to redeem myself. It was a long ways out there. I don't know. Y'all stepped it at about two seventy four, mm -hmm. and the one I missed was farther than that. But I think the one that I, the reason, the reason I missed is that again I can't see, and it was hazy that night. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was real hazy. Look, it's like when you look through the scope, it's like you're looking through fog. Well, I think I think a lot of it was how windy it was, and the broomweed puts off a little dust. Yeah. Broomweed dust was flying around. Yeah, it was so windy. Yeah, and and I think what happened is that that coyote he wasn't coming, 
No. So I think he had sat down. He was facing us, and for some reason, I thought he was turned, and I was going for the shoulder shot. Yeah. And I buzzed the bullet right by him. And because it was a clean miss, there was no thump. Because here we, you know, four or five minutes later, we another one came in, and and she sat down a little bit closer. And then I saw her good then, and I and I put a shot on her and and, and put her down. But yeah. That's the one y'all think was about 270. I, I don't know. I don't know if it was that far. Yeah, it was, it was a very good shot. I mean, it was a long ways. It was Especially close. couldn't hardly see. Yeah, it placed well. And yeah, it was a good shot for sure. I mean, yeah, this, at this point, I don't think I didn't have my gun. Yeah, yeah. At that point in time, you were you were along for the ride. You were. I was John, shot John Q. Caller. Yep. And then we went across the road, and that's whenever that first that first stand where that damn. Raccoon um, tried to the, the, the raccoon tried to run up you, and and, that, and, that, and after that I went to bed. Yeah, that's when I went. I had with the bed. I, I stayed in my little back seat. So the reason the raccoon tried to attack me for everyone watching, uh, I have this uh, thing. So we'll call for Kai's whatever you know, do our distress sound, whatever we're gonna do. At the end, we'll do our raccoons. So if we don't see no raccoons, I have this tendency to just give up on it. Yeah. So I'll just like get out of the rack, or I'll go get in the pickup, and it always never fails. We'll see a raccoon. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna try it. So I just got down from the rack. I'm walking around the truck and there's this wood pile back behind us to the left. Fifteen yards. Fifteen yards. And this thing comes out of the wood pile. And I'm on the ground, no gun at this point, because I don't have my gun. And I'm trying to open the door, not like looking at it, I'm trying to open my door. And I'm like, Are y'all gonna shoot this thing or are y'all gonna let it attack me? And then boom, you know, shot it. it Steven shot it. It was on his side. Yeah. Luckily he he had oh, it was close, man. It was five yards probably because yeah. he was shooting Shooting way down in the rack, and he, he hit it good yeah. enough. I mean, it dead, which yeah. was I thought I was about to get a uh, raccoon crawled up on, on me. Yeah, but I mean, I would just be so upset that I didn't have that on video. Yeah, that I was a little nervous because yeah. it, it started coming out of the wood pile, and I was like, All right, they're gonna shoot him pretty quick. Keeps running at me. I'm like, Are y'all gonna shoot this thing, or am I gonna get mm -hmm. attacked? Yeah, and yeah, he got shot, but yeah. that was a cool story. And then Tommy goes to bed, he's a little tired. Yeah. So the next stand is where I think we need to work on, like I was talking about, being ready. Yeah. So our communication, being ready, two things that really I think we really need to work on. And then reason four, uh, so Tommy's in the trucks taking a nap. Me and Steven get up in the rack, and we're swinging around, looking around. And I have the gun sitting up on the rack. I don't have it in my hands at all. I have my hands in my pockets because my hands are freezing cold. It is, at this point, like negative six wind chill. Yeah. Um, so when I swing around and look behind me and there's a coyote running right at us from 60 yards and I don't have a gun in my hand so I just proceed to keep my light on him and Steven shoots him with a shotgun and hits him in the ass and run it off and yeah. that was that if I'd have had my gun ready if I'd have been ready probably would have had a dead coyote so that's more of the iteration of the night we were having yeah um, just not great I mean we come out of there with five but I mean we could have had a pickup load yeah, I mean, from the beginning of the hunt to, yeah. I mean, we could have had five by the end of the day, I think, yeah. if everything would have gone our way. Even if, not even everything, if 90% of the thing was would have gone our way during the day, we'd have five in the pickup. Yeah. Um, and I should maybe have had a bobcat, because we yeah. missed a bobcat and a coyote during the day at the yeah. same stand. I mean, I think it was just a learning learning experience. We obviously really enjoy doing what we're doing, yeah. so we're learning and getting better. But I think that's we two got things that things we to work on. Yes. Communication. Yes. And being ready. But like we talked, I don't know if, if we got cut out when our technology took the crap on us, but. Yep, still recording. Still recording. Um, we talked about we do a lot of scouting now, and yeah, I think that really yeah. helps us out. Well, the that the way y'all y'all did it, y'all did the daytime scout. Wasn't, I wasn't with y'all. And y'all planned it out 30 minutes. Y'all gave 30 minutes for each set. Mm -hmm. And that's going to it, doing it going away from it, getting to the next one, 30 minutes. And the way y'all had it planned out, I mean, it was perfect. The whole the whole thing, I don't remember ever having a decision of where we were going. No, we did it. I we had we did a plan. Job. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, it was just like we knew where we were going. Only thing we had to talk about was which way the wind's blowing and which way we're going to face. Mm -hmm. And that was well, the only thing. set up. Yeah. Because we actually, we me and Steven scouted it, we, the, the weather had called for a south wind. Yeah, I remember, and so we had everything kind of planned out for a south wind, and then the day before that, 
they had mentioned that cold front got hit through from the north. And it was going to come in a day early. Yeah. What happened? And we kind of got, so when we got, we had our spots picked out, but we didn't know where we were going to set up. So we had to kind of change that up. That was the only thing. Yeah. Which is, I mean, it's hunting, it happens. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think we've, we've doing, we're doing a lot better job on scouting and preparing and planning. You have to do it, I think. Especially the concept yes. hunting. Yeah, yeah, especially the concept. You got to have a plan. And right. I think that, that, that was, well, that was huge. I don't, I mean, I hate indecision. And I don't know if the indecision is the word, but where do you want to go? Oh, I don't care. It's like with your wife. What do you want to marry? Where are we going to go eat? Where are we going to go eat? Oh, I don't care. Well, how about you? No, I, no, I don't want that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I, where are we going to go? Map it out. Boom, 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 boom. And, man, I, I, I really enjoyed that. It, that Having that all figured out already, the indecision was not there, and I, I really liked it. That was good. Well, speaking of that, speaking of planning and scouting, we need to go do that on the place we're going to hunt for February because we're hunting a new place during the day. Yeah. So we need that. We've never, we've, every time we've hunted there, we've just kind of went in there and said, all right, this is where we're sitting up, and we're, you know, we, like you talked about, we're, yeah. we didn't, we are indecisive. Yeah. So we just kind of went with it. Yeah. And I think just going with it gives you the worst opportunity. You know, sometimes you get lucky and kill a 52 pound cow. Yeah. But sometimes you don't. Yeah. Yeah. So no kidding. I think we ought to give ourselves the but best. But the way y'all had scattered that one, I mean, that was great. Y'all had dog tracks. I mean, y'all had, I mean, y'all had plenty of sign. And... Oh, there's still dogs there. Cause I mean, like, yeah. We hunted, so we hunted that February or January 16th or whatever day it was, uh, Saturday. Then the vet, we hunted that place. And then the following Saturday, we did another contest, not with Tommy. So yeah. I, you know, um, I would have been in, the fourth wheel. I wouldn't have had it, but that's all right. I was tired. I, I don't know if you could. I don't know if I had it. another 24 hours. I barely there. could do it. But anyway, uh, me and Steven got invited by a buddy of mine from high school. Uh, his brother had backed out on him and he wanted us to hunt with him. But anyway, we hunted the same exact place a week later and same results, calling in everything. I mean, same places. We you you, you got to get where they're at. Yeah. So I like, I'm a big, I'm a big, uh, some people are big sticklers on, oh, you can't overhunt, can't overhunt this place. And I'm like, I think that's bullshit. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's got some truth, but I, in hindsight, I think it's bullshit. Yeah. If there's cows there, there's cows there. Yeah. If there's bobcats there, there's bobcats there. Yeah. You know, so, and then when you kill them, I think they replace each other. Yeah. So. They may not repopulate that little, little area, but I mean, whenever you hear cows howling, you never hear one. You hear a fucking bunch of them. And how often do you kill doubles and triples in a stand? I'm not lucky to... enough. Yeah, no, I just that triple was so cool because I'd never done that. I mean, it's always been singles. Yeah. For me, now I've seen you know we've done doubles on coons and fox, but never a double on bobcat or coyote. I've never. If I ever kill a double bobcat, that would be cool. Yeah. I, had, I don't I even know if that's. I mean, I, I guess it's possible, but there's a chances of that. I didn't even see that on the internet. Ah. You know what I mean? It's very possible, I would yeah. assume. You know, anything's possible. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. I don't but, uh, know. I don't know the. That's like one of the like Powerball. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Imagine a 32 and a 33. Bam, bam. Yeah. Well, yeah. the bad thing is about the contest, they only place you one time. You, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that, and also speaking of weight of the cat, the big cat was recordly low for first place this year. And this guy missed one that was decently sized. I mean, obviously, we don't know the weight, but. Yeah. Uh, what could have been? What could have been? Which I guess he's still there, maybe. Yeah, so, yeah. No, well, I mean, you can get another, another chance at him. Because, I mean, like I said, we hunted, hunted the next week after, and we hunted the exact same field we saw the bobcat, and the coyote came from the exact same spot the bobcat came from. So that's what I'm saying. Like, one week we were there, and a coyote was not there. And the next week we go there, and a coyote was there. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, where the fuck are they at when we call them? Yeah. Type of thing. But speaking of it, we got a, we got a new place over there near that. We got a new 400 acre spot over there that we killed. You know, uh, Joey Bowen, who used to work at Integrity with Scott Riley, or Scott Presley and Mike. Oh, yeah. yeah. Joey. Joey. His place. He's got four acres over there, and we killed a cow on his place. Okay. He says that his wife's feeding a bobcat. <laughs> but it comes, she puts out chicken on the front porch, I guess, and feeds it on accident. We don't know that it's fed, but apparently that's what he says. Yeah. They have a pet bobcat that just comes around. But, and uh, apparently he's heard some screams, so. Oh, might be a mountain kitty line. Mountain kitty line. Who knows? 
And that's what that's a story from Stephen. And so here's the deal: if a mountain lion comes out, all bets are off. I'm not gonna whistle. I'm not gonna let anybody know. I'm putting a shot on that son of a bitch. Yeah. And then I'm I'm gonna take my picture with it. I'm gonna be laying beside it. We'll, we'll be like spooning. <laughs> You're gonna spoon the cat. I'm gonna spoon with this cat. Uh -huh. And we're gonna take a picture of it. Oh, and I'm gonna okay. be smiling. I ain't gonna give a damn. Well, and that's gonna cool. drop me off at the awesomes. Me and my cat will be sitting there eating gut bombs all damn night. Well, I don't give a shit. Yeah, that, that's. I think that's. Yeah, all bets are off for sure. If a, if a mountain kitty lion comes in. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I love y'all, but hey, I'm gonna shoot this on bitch. Yeah. Um, I guess we better get back to our our contest. Yeah. We're almost through that thing. Yeah. So uh, shot the shot the coyote in the ass with shotgun. And then you woke up, killed one. Yeah. And, and no, 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 no. Pain. Right before that, I used your gun. Yeah. That's what it was. The next thing after that, he's still sleeping. I get his gun out of the pickup, and I hit one. So then that makes me a little more mad, but also a little more like, okay, maybe it wasn't me. It wasn't the gun, or it wasn't me. It was the gun. Yeah. So put one right where I aimed with your gun, killed it. So that made it four. I didn't get his four coyotes, and then you woke up, killed another one, made it five. Yeah. And then we went around to the brush pile and killed three coons in the stand. And then that was daytime pretty much. And that's yep. when we got in the truck, truck and moved yeah. on. And I tell you, I mean, we were seeing and seeing and seeing. I mean, stuff was coming in. And when the sun came up and we got down in the winters and it was 13 degrees and snowing, done. And we, yeah. even, we even tried to repeat the magic and went to the, the big coyote stand. Yep, yep. Nothing. And nothing. What? No, we went that stand nothing, but then we went down by the brush piles uh, and that's when I had the shotgun. You shotgunned a, a raccoon. Yeah. That was fun. That was my first shotgun kill. Yeah. I am not really a big shotgun fan. Yeah. And that was fun. I can't I can't lie. That was probably my highlight. But things things were looking up toward the end of the yeah, line. Yeah. But then we got down there by the golf course where we had another fox that we think was pretty good. Y'all even hear it bark? Mm, nothing. He wasn't near. I think he was just it was snowing cold. I think he was just Bedded up somewhere. Bedded up and, but, you know, and it was it was now one o'clock and we'd been hunting for a no shit twenty five hours, straight. And we had weighed our we weighed some stuff. We didn't have anything big. The raccoons weren't big enough, and we went to the house. Yeah, that was tiresome. Yeah, and then we went we went to the house and we we called it quits. But <laughs> I think I think we learned a lot, and I think we can work on our communication. Mm -hmm. We can work on scouting. Yeah, that scouting's is. huge. Maybe, maybe scout about three days before. Maybe three days before, because usually by then the dumbass meteorologist, which what that's what we should be doing for a living, because you can get that shit wrong, <laughs> and it's okay. You're back to work, and it's no big deal. Yeah. But usually three days at least they can get the damn direction Close. right. Yeah. yeah. And you can now you can know, okay, we're gonna have a southwest wind at two o'clock and then it's gonna move to a south wind at six. I mean, you know what I mean? You can kinda yeah. kinda plan, but the only bad thing about scouting we can't really scout during the week, you know? Because you work, I work, you know. Yeah. It's kinda like a you can't just leave, you know. Yeah. They might get mad. Yeah, because it'd take all damn day, but it'd I guess all day. And uh well this Sunday there ain't no football on. We could go this Sunday because next go. Sunday is Super Bowl, and we'll already be hunting by then. We'll already be hunting, and that's going to be a trick. Yeah, that's that's the part I was thinking about that today. So we probably won't sleep Friday night, or I won't. You probably will. Oh yeah, I sleep. I never sleep go. before the hunt. Oh, I sleep like so, an eagle. But I have I have my my long range competition on Saturday. Yeah, then you guys. So you're shooting shooting your contest Saturday morning. We're hunting with your son this 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 hunt, so he'll yeah. probably go with us. Yeah. Me, Steven, and uh, Chris will go yeah. hunt, and you'll meet us after you're done with your contest. But the point of, we're so we're gonna hunt all night, and most of the morning Sunday perhaps, and then Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. And that's gonna suck. Cause yeah. I slept like a baby when I got home Sunday afternoon. I had little naps, and then finally, I think it was seven thirty that night. I finally laid it down. I was like, ah, I can't go anymore, and I went to bed at seven thirty, and I literally. I don't know that I rolled over. I didn't wake up to go pee or nothing. <laughs> and the next thing I know, the alarm was going off, you know. So, oh, fuck. yeah, I was like, holy bat shit, rat man. Uh, yeah, but no, I know, guys, we haven't done a podcast in a while. Or, and and we it's not that we haven't been hunting. We've been hunting our ass off. And we've been killing shit. It's just we can't.
can't get together. I can't do it. Well, I guess I could. I could do the podcast by myself, but. Yeah, that's hard. That's it? hard to do. I mean, you know, and then I need to do some more content. I'm, I'm fixing to build a, uh, a brand new six dasher. and It's going to be a crossover that I can hunt with it or I can competition shoot with it. I want to do a video on that build. I've got another. Uh, we need to do. Uh, I think. I think comparison videos would be yeah. good. I think we need to do our suppressor comparison. Yeah, I bought that. that I bought that decibel meter. Yeah, I think. I think we got some stuff coming up we can do. We just got to get together and, uh, you know, and make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm down. I'm always down to do a little content. Yeah, content's fun because yeah, because you know our content's gun related. Yeah, gun related. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, Speaking of hunting, though, I wanted to tell this story, and you were in the story, so you, I want to talk about it. Yeah. So when we hunted like a week before, or two weeks before the contest, January, when we hunted those new places of yours, and we saw those three lights, that, I want to Most talk about definitely. that. Most definitely. So, that was at Lanny Ballman's place. Yeah, so we made one stand, didn't see nothing, made, we're at down the fence line about 900 yards, and we're facing west. Facing west. And we're calling, we're about seven minutes from the stand or so. And these three lights come out of the sky yes. and they're just running toward us. And then they get up a little bit, so they're getting closer, and then they're just gone. Gone. Like, and I look over at him, and he's not like, 10 feet from me. I said, did you see that? And he goes, absolutely. Yeah. And I don't know what the was. I, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't have a clue. They were, they were evenly spaced. Yes, they were three lights. And, and they, they were headed east. east. We were facing west. They were headed east. Mm -hmm. And they were flashing. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, and then gone. And gone. Yeah, gone. White lights. Gone. Yes. In a perfectly straight line. Yes. Very evenly spaced. Very, very quick moving. Yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna say it was alien, but yeah, it it was. I don't want to get on that. That I bet I know it. it was probably Elvis and Tupac. Who's the third? Out. Who's the third? Well, it was a big shit. Oh. You know, it was all one shit. Yeah, Elvis, and and Elvis and Tupac and 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 what's uh, Marilyn Monroe? There oh, we go. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. That's it was them just, just cruising by saying hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That good. was that that was I've never seen anything like that. I mean, I'm 26 years old. I don't know if you've ever seen anything near that. No, no. But that was insane. Yeah, never seen that like that. Yeah, and the and the cool thing is, is you could have seen it, and I'm not. Then I'd be like, hey, you're it's full crazy. of shit. But he saw it, so I saw it. We both seen it in our ass. I said, did you see that shit? And he was like, ah, yeah. I did. Yeah. And I, I don't know if anyone believes this because every time I tell the story, they just look at me yeah. like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But anyway, guys, we're going to do some more content and we're going to do a t-shirt giveaway. Oh, no. I got a box of damn t-shirts. Yeah, we need to do it. So uh, comment on this video and you're going to get your name put in the randomizer for the win the t-shirt. Well, your comment should be your shirt size. How about that? Yeah, that work? Or, or or a constructive comment, and then at the end of it, put XL seven large. XL seven XL. Damn. Yeah, I'll have to special order that one. But I like, can you? Never mind. I don't know, man. You know, I mean, I don't know if you cow hunt seven yeah. through seven XL. Yeah, don't don't hit me up about a medium, you bunch of little weirdos. You know, trying to wear one size too small because you think you got big guns, freaking weirdo. Hey, but yeah. So no. we need to we need to do more podcasts. Yeah, more we'll podcasts. Because we'll we've been hunting. hunting. I mean, we got the content. I need to get Mark on here. I need everybody needs a Mark. Mark's great, man. He's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, it's always an adventure when you go hunt with Mark, especially if you hunt the way he hunts in the pickup. Well, I want I want to I want to hunt with y'all one of these days. Yeah. I probably sh I sh was I was MIA this weekend when y'all hunted. But, yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I want to hunt with y'all. I don't want to, but I don't want to hunt his way. And I don't want him to get offended by it, but I just don't. Well, if if we're gonna go hunt his way at his place, hunting hogs, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But if we're gonna call and we're trying to kill some predators, no, we don't hunt that way. Because I want to, I want to hear from him in person how his experience was doing some real hunting and how he liked it. Yeah, because last last Saturday night was the first time he'd ever hunted like this. All right, guys, it happened again. Uh, a little. Mechanical difficulties, uh, something we got to figure out and we got to work through to make this deal a little bit better. But anyway, we appreciate everybody watching up to this point. Uh, if you made it this far into the video, uh, please like, subscribe, share. I mean, that means a lot to us, and that way we can grow this thing and uh, see what we can do to make it better. 
And I guess what we can do, uh, if we mentioned it, I'm not sure if we did, we'll do another T-shirt giveaway, do a comment, you know, make some kind of a comment. We'll put your name in a randomizer, and we will uh, see if we can't uh, get it done, get you get you somebody a free T-shirt. But anyway, thanks again for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.